Hello friends, welcome back to the new tutorial of the type ORM. Today we are going to learn working with the transactions in the type ORM. Transactions are crucial part of ensuring that the data consistency and the integrity, especially when you are perform multiple related operations that should either all exist or fail. Type ORM provides support for the transactions to allow multiple database operations to be grouped together, ensuring the atomicity. In a transaction, you can perform multiple database operations if any one of them fail all changes can be rolled back to maintain the data integrity okay like suppose if something went wrong or something would have not like correct so in that case we can roll back all the changes like take an example okay concepts of transaction that is automaticity all operations within a transaction either completed successfully or the rollback entirely consistency the database will always transition from one valid state to another even after a failure isolation Transactions are isolated from each other until they are complete. Changes made one transaction are not visible to the other transactions until the transaction commits. Durability. Once the transaction is committed, its changes are permanent, even in the case of the system failure. So let's steps to use the transaction in the type ORM. So let's have a look on that one. So we, here we have using the entity manager, entity manager for the transactions. So this is the entity manager, right? And here you can see that, let's suppose we are going to start the transactions, right? Okay, so let's, I'm going to use this app dots, app data source, right? So let's copy this, okay? And which table they are using? Okay, the post one, right? So we have the post table, I think, yes. Let's copy and paste this. Hide this word trap. Okay, so here we have app data source. Initialize. Let's paste this. There is an error, but what the error is? The post. I think we haven't added the post entity, so let's import this. And in the post, we have to add the post.ts also. Okay, so now the, I think the error should be resolved, but here there is some more error post okay the relationship in the users okay so let me get back that user file okay so I think in the entity post we have it so this is the what we wanted that is the post entity let me use this because this is the old data we have no sorry in the post okay now we need the user entity so this is the user one right so we are going to use this user fine this is done so no error is there okay relationships all are maintained properly right so here you can see that in the app data source initialize entity manager transition start the transition inside this block you can use the transitional entity manager all operations here are the part of the same transactions okay so first you try to insert a user okay then save then trying to use the po post one right the transition entity manager save that one if everything succeeds then transition will commit automatically if an error, if an, any uh, error occurs the transition will be rolled back okay the time transition would be failed let's go to the pg admin and delete the respective rows because i need to create generate it again for this i think we should use later on like if i want to alter the tables or something how it would be possible in this type orm we were going to learn in the coming series right so don't worry about that one okay let's remove this also post fine now run npm run dev oh there is an issue entity meta user post was not found check the specified correct entity if it is connected to the options let me check what exactly it is So 
so let me check here we have the transactions query right entity anything we have missed and synchronized this data source okay this is there and initialize with entity manager yes i think everything is there but why is there is an error during the data source initialization type of error, error entity meta data for the user post was not found check if the spell the correct entity in check if it is connected to the connection options user slash post right so this is missing right so i think here also the post is there right so uh, that is missed okay so now we can run it because the transaction needs to be commit right now here you can see it take time because if if anywhere it fails then automatically it roll back let's have a look that it is success or not let's go to the database and check that all the entities come over here or not refresh now you can see that we have a user right and uh, all rows so inserted that means the transaction is completed and same with the post we can check and here you can see that it is inserted okay so this is how it works to transition right and uh, transition method the transition method is used to initiate a transaction it accepts an async or callback function where the operations will be performed transaction entity manager inside the transaction you will be use the transaction entity manager to perform the database operation instead of the regular transactional entity manager to perform the database okay all operations inside the block are the part of the same transactions right automatic commit and the rollback if the operations within the transaction block succeed the transaction will be automatically committed if error occurs the transaction will be rolled back but a word transaction is success successfully so in that case already committed okay using the query runner that is the manual transaction control query runner gives you a more manual control over the transaction life cycle including the committing and the rollback the transactions manually it is useful for if you need more fine grain control over the transactions right so transactions using the query runner okay so i think the rest of the app data source is there but we need this one okay so let's copy and paste this and we are using the query runner right so here we have create query runner and the same i think everything is there but here we have a catch for the transactions to be rolled back okay so let's use this So app data source, let's copy and paste this. Start query runner. Okay. So start the transaction. So I'm going to put the chain to and the, here this one also. And the post, another post. This is another post, right? And save this transaction. Okay. Commit the transaction and everything goes fine. Query runner commit the transaction. Else roll back the transaction in the case of the error. Transaction will finally release the query error regardless of the success or the failure okay so save this let's run it success right if i just reload this one or just to run this another post is added that means this is also success okay moving to the next part so this is also done transactional so the start transaction you have begin the transaction by calling the start transaction on the query runner query runner dot manager dot save instead of using the entity manager we using the query runner manager to save the entities inside the transaction commit transaction if all operations inside the transaction are successful we explicitly call the commit transaction to commit all the transactions roll back transactions in any operation fails we can roll back transaction to roll back the changes release 
finally we can call the release to release the query runner okay handling errors in the real applications is essential to handle the errors during transactions as shown in the examples you should always have a try catch block to catch any errors and the rollback transactions transaction success failure any transaction is rolled back you none of the changes will be saved nested transactions in the type ORM we can use the nested transaction however instead transactions are only supported in the query runner we can use Entity manager, all transactions within the transaction block are executed. A single atomic operation, you can't nest them. To manage nested transactions with query runner, you would start a new transaction inside the existing transaction like this. So in the it is possible in the query runner. Okay. So you, here you can see that nested operations. So you can put over the nested operations, then catch it and commit the outer transactions. Okay. So here we have the final words. Entity manager is the simplest and the most common way to work with the transition in the type ORM, automatically handling the commit and the rollback for you. Query runner provides full control over the transaction's lifecycle, allowing you to manually commit or rollback transactions. This is useful for more complex scenarios where you need fine grain control. Atomic operations type ORM ensures all operations with the transactions are atomic. They either all succeed or fail. Error handling. Always use the try catch block to ensure that the errors in the transactions leads to a proper rollback and the cleanup. Using transactions properly help you to maintain the consistency and the integrity of your data when you're dealing with the multiple operations that should either all succeed or all fail together. So this is all about the transactions in the type ORM. Any doubt, any query in that, do let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day.